We're officially on the Highline Trail. We are probably a quarter mile into it. First major views of the trail. So as you can see, looking in front of me, there's not really a designated trail. The only way I know where I'm going besides using maps on my phone are with these cairns right here. There's one up further on the hill, so I know I need to go straight that way. Let's go. Come here, Virgins. First pass of the hike. Thank goodness for the maps on my phone because, again, there is absolutely no trail whatsoever but i do know that i'm going in the right direction and that i am on trail we're about three hours and seven and a half miles into our hike just stopping for lunch um, at dead men's lake Today was day one of the Uinta Highland Trail. Today we started at Leedy Peak Trailhead and we're sitting at Chapetta Lake right now, which is about 14 and a half miles for the day. Um, we've seen one day hiker and two fishermen, and other than that, we have not seen anybody else out here. We're a little bit tired, but we're doing good. We're leaving camp on day two. Slept pretty well, as best I can do for camping. Herge and I were up probably every hour hearing noises. He woke up at 4 a.m. barking and growling at something, and all I heard were some steps and breathing, but thankfully his growling and barking sent that animal away. Uh, it got cold enough that there was ice and frost on the ground last night, but we're warming up quickly with the hiking. I don't know if the elevation change shows up really well on camera, but this will be the big climb of the day. The trail goes down there. There's a little goalie or ravine. Then I climb all the way somewhere up there. That'll be North Pole Pass. We were all the way, way over there. Worked our way down, then climbed up to where we are now. I'm making our way 
somewhere up there. Made it to the top of North Pole Pass. Heading down to North Pole Pass. This is a view on the other side. I just came across some old man who was out hunting and just killed an elk. And let me just say, if you don't know what you're talking about, please don't talk about it. You try to mansplain where the Highline Trail was. Sir, I've been on it for 25 miles. I know where it is. I tried to explain that I needed ultraviolet light to filter my water. Incorrect, I know what I'm doing. And try to tell me what equipment I would need for the supposedly upcoming rain. Again, sir, I know what I'm doing. Please keep your thoughts to yourself. This is my campsite for tonight, right Ridges? And right out the back door. We have Kidney Lakes. Day two recap, I'm sitting here icing my feet. Here is the stream behind me. And then Kidney Lake is up over there. Today we did 14 miles from Geppetto Lake to Kidney Lake. We got here around 3.15. So we could have gone further with the hours in the day, but I was feeling tired and I like this campsite. It feels safe. Uh, I can successfully hang my um, food bag from a branch and I don't think we'll be getting any nighttime visitors. We're not on the route to the water. So hopefully the moose and elk stay away tonight. Today we saw one hunter and three elk. Thankfully, Ridge did not see the elk. Tomorrow we'll be heading up Anderson Pass, which is the route to King's Peak, which is a popular um, day hike. So maybe we'll see some more hikers tomorrow. Leaving camp on day three, it was an uneventful night. No nighttime visitors, thankfully. But that is one of the worst things I'm finding about this trail. I'm not used to tenting alone. There's normally other people around. And in my brain, every single noise I hear in the middle of the night is something coming to maul me in Ridge. And poor Ridge, since he can't see out of the tent, is always on high alert too. So neither of us get great sleep out here. But today, the Garmin says it's about a 70% chance of rain. So we're hoping to get some miles in before that happens. Subtle through here. It's a good thing we have our phone GPS maps and that ridge is good at trailblazing. There's not a lot of cairns or signs anymore.
We've gone three miles so far this morning. It's a view right now as we're stopping to eat breakfast. I'm having cold soaked apple cinnamon oatmeal. Ridge might have a few bites. Okay, now that we're a little bit closer, I still might be wrong, but I'm fairly certain that right there is King's Peak and we've got to climb. That is Anderson Pass somewhere in there that we've got to go up and over. We're basically above tree line now, so we got to check the skies. Looks good, given that we'll spend the next couple hours climbing up and over that pass. Hopefully we won't get caught in any rain or thunderstorms. We started way down in that valley. I have to climb up and somewhere the pass goes up over there. It's hard to catch your breath this high of elevation. But we have less than two miles to the pass. Just a heck of a lot of elevation gain in those two miles. We're so close. Just have to make across this rock field. And that right there is Anderson Pass. All the way up there is King's Peak, which we are definitely not doing, but we'll head right over there. I don't know if there is a trail or not. All we're doing is rock hopping between these patches of dirt. We made it to the top of Anderson Pass. It's the highest point along the High Line Trail. Definitely made us work for it. But what an amazing view. And down there is the basin we'll be going down into. Honestly, I wanted to stay at the top longer so I can get a break because we haven't had a decent break since breakfast several hours ago. But it's just too dang cold up top, too exposed, too windy. I want to make sure we get down off the mountain before any potential storm comes. A mad sprint down the mountain before the rain starts. Not only do we have to get down the mountain, we also have to follow that path all the way across the open plains to the trees. So there's a high likelihood that we're going to be getting wet, but we're going as fast as we can. What's crazy is that we just came from all the way over there, Anderson Pass. Came down all the way through this valley. And are up on the other side. This is not an ideal setup by any means, but we're above 11,000 feet and there's an incoming storm. So this is our tent setup for the night. Sounds like we're in for our first storm. The rain clouds held off while we finished hiking. We only got about a half hour of a drizzle, which is good, but we um, got to about 16 miles around 2.15 and hadn't taken a break and I knew we were done for the day. If we had kept going, we would have, would have had to commit to another five miles up and over pass, which obviously I was not about to do. But now the wind's picking up, there's some thunder. I'm not excited with our tent spot, but it was the only thing available that I could find. We're above 11,000 feet, which means that tent spots or camp spots are very hard to find by the trees. So I'm hoping we make it through the night without any damage to the tent.
about 6.15 a.m. I should be getting out of bed. I just don't want to. Like Armin said right now, it's around 38 to 40 degrees with a real feel around 34 degrees. And getting out of this cozy sleeping bag and tent just doesn't seem like fun. I know we'll warm up once we start moving, but it takes about 20 minutes or so to pack up camp. And that's the part that I really just don't want to do. Well, we finally made it awake and broke camp. It is quite chilly out here, but we're starting the day with an uphill climb up and over Porcupine Pass. Then we'll have a second pass later in the day. The goal is about 18 miles today. And here is the lake we slept next to, Tungsten Lake. Then I'm not sure which is the pass. It's either that or that. Made to the top of Porcupine Pass. This is the side we came from. And this is where we're going. This is the view where we're sitting down for second breakfast. I had a protein bar when we left camp this morning and now I'm having cold soaked oatmeal. I'm really struggling with my appetite out here. I packed enough for over 2000 calories a day because physically I need it. In the first two days I only had about 1800 calories each day and then yesterday 1200 and that was forcing myself to eat those 1200 calories. All the food I packed is food I've eaten on the trail before and I've never had an appetite issue in the past so I'm wondering if this is some version of altitude sickness. I'd have to look up more when I get home. But beyond lack of appetite, the only thing, I'm, I'm feeling tired, which makes sense because I'm not eating enough and then this is just a really hard trail. So I'm hoping I can force myself to eat more today so that we can make it through today uh, and finish up the hike strong. I waited until there were blue skies all around before I left our lunch afternoon spot. And of course, the minute we start hiking, storm clouds show up over the mountain again. We made it to the top of Red Knob Pass. Just in time because it looks like the valley we were just in is getting hit with rain and better skies this way. So I have no idea where the trail will be taking us. So it looks like actually there's a small path along the mountain there. Somewhere down there is where we're headed. This path down the side of the mountain is really scary. On a big incline, a lot of loose rock. Good puppy! Good puppy! I believe right there is Dead Horse Pass, which we're gonna go over tomorrow. 
whenever it online, it's the hardest pass of the trail, hence the name. Horses and mules, stock animals have actually died going up it because it's very steep with loose rock. But that's tomorrow's problem. Horrible situation. I lost my Garmin about six miles back, back over Red Knob Pass. I keep repeating myself, it's 5.15. It would take, with my pack, about two and a half, with my pack and with how tired we are, two and a half to three hours to get back to where we left the Garmin. Through a potential storm over the pass, that's not something we can safely do. I'm just gonna keep repeating that to myself. I can't do anything right now. I feel like I shouldn't be just sitting here but, but there's nothing I can do right now. I'm gonna sleep in my hiking clothes. I'm going to set my alarm for 4.30. We're gonna leave everything here, besides food for us for the day, of course. The tent, sleeping bag, pads, everything like that is gonna stay here. We're just gonna carry food for the day and water. Rich is not even gonna carry his pack. And hopefully slack packing with the alarm going off at 4.30, we get back to the Garmin before 6, 6.30. Got a note to chat and mom, so that I only missed tonight's check-in, but tomorrow, not tomorrow morning. I know, I know Chad and mom are going to be panicking, and it's not fair to them. I've been hiking for about 45 minutes right now. Got up at 3.30. It's been absolutely terrifying. Not at all enjoyable, but mom and Chad deserve to have an answer that I'm okay as soon as possible. So I'm hoping to get to the garment and send Chad a message before he gets to work. I'm hoping he thinks I just fell asleep last night and forgot to message. I doubt that. I bet he's panicking, but he deserved to know as soon as possible and I needed resolution. I'm hoping it's where I left it. If not, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I've laid awake since 1 a.m. Waiting for it to become a decent time. 3.30 probably still isn't the best time to be out climbing mountain pass. I heard some coyotes howling. Like I said, I'm terrified, but we all need this. Okay, it's time for the moment of truth. There's where I left it. It'll be right over here. Which hollow. Yeah. God almighty. That's such a relief. And now that it's daylight and I have my Garmin. And we're hiking back to the camp from last night. I can see that was one of the scariest things I've ever done. Well alone the panic over the family panicking. I don't like the night to begin with. And night hiking for several hours up and over a pass, and then I heard two different packs of coyotes howling. This dog is very much enjoying running around without his pack on. He doesn't understand the implications of what's been going on this morning, but I'm just so glad he's always happy to come along and has a good attitude. I never thought I'd be so happy to see my tent again. This is where we left it when we went out. This morning. It is a beautiful camp spot. I wish we would enjoy it more. This is Dead Horse Lake. This is, this is Dead Horse Lake where we spent the night and the last couple hours. And then I don't really see a trail, but somewhere up there is Dead Horse Pass. It's the sketchiest pass of the trail from what I've heard. Here's a closer look at the pass. Somehow, we climb up all those rocks all the way up to the top, somewhere in there. There's Dead Horse Lake. And here's the progress we made so far. I'm all the way down there. I think this is where it starts getting sketchy. Not that Ridge knows anything about that.
made it to the top of Dead Horse Pass. There's where we came from. This is the view over the mountain. Officially made it off of Dead Horse Pass. There were some sketchy parts, but not as, not anything too bad. Nothing worse than some of the hikes we've done, like Five for Horn. Um, but the good news is that also means that we only have one more pass left in the trail. I think it's Rocky Sea Pass. We may or may not get to that today, depending on how we're feeling. But that is something positive to think about. Going red, you missed the turn. The weather does not look good straight ahead. You can see the rain coming down. I'm just hoping it's either done by the time we get there or that the trail goes some different area than straight ahead. We've been lucky so far with that. So fingers crossed because So, things I said on mine said to follow that trail. It goes higher up in the ridge, so it's higher elevation, but avoids a lot of the down tree mess and it's easier trail to follow. But I'm gonna do the high line specific trail that will be harder to follow, but shorter miles and lower elevation, especially with the weather being undetermined what it's gonna do. We're supposed to cross this river right there, but I guess I'm going to be going maybe up the river to try and find a better spot to cross. I've had to go about a quarter mile upstream to find this section of rocks and logs. I don't know how other people have been managing this river crossing. I mean, besides if they just want dogs to worry about. I did manage to step in some bogs and my feet can stay entirely dry, but hopefully it will be safe. Trying to find our way through this maze of down trees is ridiculous and exhausting. A pretty lake before the last pass of the trail. Right up there, Rocky Sea Pass. We're just gonna keep putting one foot in front of the other and hopefully we make it up and over. I'm fairly certain one of those right over there is Dead Horse Pass that I went over this morning at around 11, 11.30 a.m. And then we somehow found our way through the valley all the way up to over here. Finally made it to Carolyn Lake, where we're camping tonight. Today absolutely crushed me. So it started at 3.30. I'd hike five and a half miles back over a pass to get the Garmin I'd left yesterday on one of my breaks. Then I had like that same five and a half miles back over the pass, so I did that pass an additional two times. Got back to Dead Horse Lake, and then took a two hour break and around 11 o'clock decided to start making some positive miles on the trail. I think I did pretty good, I made about 12 miles, but those 12 miles included two more pretty bad passes. Miles of blowdown trees and um, burn forest. Rivers that were difficult to cross and then the whole thing was rock, so my feet are killing me. What I am happy about is that I get to hike six miles out tomorrow and be done. In honor of our last night in the tent, here's our setup. This is my bed that Ridge is laying on. This is his blanket. That's my camp clothes and Ridge's pack. This is Ridge's pad that I'm sitting on. 
And then that's where we keep our backpack and our random miscellaneous things. Leaving camp on day six. We have six miles and then we are so excited to be off this trail, back with Chad, and then back home and able to sleep in a warm bed and take a warm shower. I think last night was the coldest shower, or cold shower. I think last night was the coldest night we had on trail. I slept in all my layers, even though it was the lowest elevation we slept at. But, needs to say, hopefully these next six miles fly by and then we can be done. This trail is what yesterday was like, but a lot worse. And this is why that was why my feet hurt the other day yesterday. Walking on all these rocks, digging into the bottom of your feet, no matter how thick and sturdy of soles you have, really takes a beating. This is how you know you're getting back to the trailhead where people commonly come out for day hikes. They're nice and put bridges like this to cross water instead of waiting for you to cross some logs or rocks. These are the trail conditions on the last day. One final burn area. At least the trail through this one is well marked. It's still so sad. <laughs> 